Diving right in, we're going to start with a little bit of what corrosion is and some of the factors that impact it. So the main topic of corrosion that we're going to be talking about today is, uh, is known as galvanic corrosion. Um, and one of the, the important things to note is that there are three major causes of galvanic corrosion, um, all listed here. So the first one is that you have to have a difference in electric potential between two different metals. Sometimes this is known as, as dissimilar metals um, or when you have two different types of metals in a system or in an enclosure. Um, the second factor that's a main cause of galvanic corrosion is um, an electrical path between the two metals, um, also known as a conductive path. And a lot of the times when it comes to EMI shielding, that's met by an EMI gasket or a sealant or a conductive paint. Um, and finally, the last major cause of galvanic corrosion is that there has to be the presence of an electrolyte, um, which typically is a fluid such as atmospheric humidity or salt fog that ends up having the ability to break down uh, either of the two metals or both. Thanks, Ben. So, you know, we talked about the difference in uh, galvanic potential between metals. And what you want to do in the order to mitigate that is you want to try to minimize the difference in the galvanic potential, which means you want to try to make sure that the materials you choose are close on the galvanic series. Um, for instance, if you have an aluminum housing, you would choose a silver plated aluminum gasket. You know, you're trying to keep those those uh, close on the galvanic series. A presence of electrolyte, fluids, salt fog, humidity, you're gonna wanna reduce, if possible, eliminate the presence of an electrolyte. So, you know, you can use a beryllium spring finger gasket, but that's not gonna prevent water ingress or moisture intrusion. So you wanna use a conductive elastomer gasket. Um, and if possible, you would wanna try to put an additional environmental seal, uh, possibly. But, you know, the, the tricky part is the conductive path between interfaces. So, Ben, why shouldn't I just powder coat my entire box and be done with it? Well, as much as providing or removing that uh, conductive path between the two interfaces would absolutely help minimize galvanic corrosion, unfortunately, it's the nature of an EMI gasket to cause a conductive path between those two interfaces. So in order to meet EMI shielding um, requirements, it would really be almost impossible to eliminate that conductive path. So now talking about some of the costs of corrosion, um, according to the Government Accountability Office, corrosion ends up costing the Department of Defense more than about $21 billion a year. And a lot of that is um, in the form of rework or increased maintenance schedules, um, mostly caused by, by harsher environments. So here we've got four different types of environments, um, each of which is kind of seen across the board in terms of applications that, that Comerics deals with. So when it comes to class A environments, that's typically a controlled indoor environment, a lot of the time seen with life science or uh, indoor telecom applications. Typically, they're not really exposed to weather. So you don't see a lot of galvanic corrosion in environments such as, as class A. Um, when it gets to class B, that's where you have an uncontrolled outdoor environment, um, an exposed um, application such as automotive, a lot of outdoor telecom applications, industrial, and when it comes to defense and aerospace, it's uh, ground vehicles, shelters, things like that. Um, when it gets to class C and D, that's where you really need to take into account a lot of the material choices when it comes to minimizing galvanic corrosion, especially with the presence of salt fog in marine applications or the constant exposure to weather and rapid temperature changes in aerospace applications. Um, it really is going to be the harsher environments that will speed up the galvanic corrosion and create a lot of cost in the system. So, you know, why do we focus on corrosion? Because we want our box to work in the field for a long time. But Ben, what do you mean by, what do we mean when we say improved field reliability? I mean, I have a 20 year field life requirement. I designed my box. I got my EMI gasket. Okay, so what's the problem? So one of the principles that we talk about a lot is known as shielding decay. Um, what ends up happening is that shielding performance actually can, can drop over time as a result of corrosion. And a lot of the times that's due to the, the oxides that build up on the surface of the interfaces. Um, so what happens is as corrosion builds up, you see shielding performance drop um, over time. And, and sometimes over the course of that, that life cycle, over the course of that 20 years, you may not be meeting a lot of the requirements that you originally designed in in the first place. And, you know, we, we, so we talked about having to maintain an electrical condu a conductive path, but, you know, what about a dual seal? I mean, I could just add a secondary gasket to the outside. Wouldn't that make everything fine? 
Yeah, absolutely. A dual seal would, would typically be a great, uh, great solution. The problem is sometimes it can be costly or um, you just don't have enough real estate in your designs to be able to incorporate a, a two seal system. Some examples of, of two seal systems um, are things like co-molded or co-extruded gaskets. Um, what that can include is basically a conductive and a non-conductive material extruded or molded in parallel where the non-conductive material prevents the conductive material from weather. Um, a lot of the times we'll see this in the seal-to-seal -seal design as well.